Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. There's no doubt that the handheld market is definitely blowing up and it has been for quite some time now. One of the main competitors on the market that really got the ball rolling is obviously the Steam Deck. And now we've got the Steam Deck OLED. We've also seen the ROG Ally, a lot of IONEO devices, GPD, 1X player. A lot of people have kind of jumped on it. And one thing that all of these have in common is AMD. So they're using an AMD APU, which houses the CPU and the iGPU portion of everything. And Intel isn't a stranger to the handheld market either. We've had some older 1X players, some older GPD stuff powered by Intel, and now we've got the new MSI Claw, which uh, performance is definitely a bit lackluster. I've been keeping up to date with the BIOS and uh, MSI Control Center with mine, trying to see if we could get a big jump in performance on this thing, but unfortunately it hasn't happened just yet. But one major player that's been missing from the handheld market is obviously NVIDIA. So I'm a huge fan of the NVIDIA GPUs, and I know right now they're really focused on AI with their data centers and everything like that, but there's no doubt they do make some pretty powerful GPUs. And recently there is a rumor floating around that NVIDIA is working on a handheld, and hopefully we don't see something like the Shield. Now, when this released, awesome handheld. I've actually still got mine. I was thinking about doing a 2024 showcase on this thing. But this is powered by ARM, and as a lot of you already know, the Switch uses an NVIDIA chip, which is also an ARM chip. Personally, I would love to see NVIDIA kind of team up with somebody and come up with an x86 solution, something with either an integrated GPU or even a DGPU like we see in laptops. But it definitely needs to be a newer generation RTX, and one of the big things I think that they could bring to the table is their DLSS technology. So when we're talking about a smaller screen, 7 inch, 8 inch screen, Going up to 1080p from 900p, to my eye, doesn't make a huge difference. I wouldn't mind playing at 900p as long as I could get those really high frame rates, or at least newer AAA games with a higher setting at, let's say, 60fps. And another thing that I've personally been using quite a bit on their 4000 series GPUs is frame generation. It does work wonders in some situations on harder to run games when you're talking about, let's say, an RTX 4060 or something like that you can definitely get a much higher frame rate using frame gen. Now don't get me wrong, AMD's fluid motion frames is getting better. FSR is great for those lower end GPUs. And pairing this up with all of their technologies using let's say HyperRX does work out really well on higher end GPUs. Personally, I haven't seen a super jump in performance on the lower end iGPUs, which don't put out that much performance. Talking about the Radeon 780M that we're seeing in a lot of these handhelds with the 7000 series and 8000 series APUs. Down the road, we'll definitely see much better performance out of these iGPUs, but I think Nvidia could definitely come to the table with something really, really interesting. Unfortunately, there's much more money in AI technologies, and they're definitely going to be focusing on that for quite some time. But to keep the mainstream happy, I mean, there's always a chance that we'll see an NVIDIA powered handheld hit the market. And I'd love to see them partner up with somebody like, let's say, Intel. Intel on the CPU side, keep an x86 so we know we can get all of our favorite PC games up and running. NVIDIA over on the GPU side of things. So what I've come up with here is what I'd like to see out of an NVIDIA powered handheld. And recently I did post it in my community section asking everybody the same question. If you want to let me know in the comments of this video, go right ahead. But this is exactly what I'd like to see out of an NVIDIA handheld, whether they partner with somebody or create one themselves. At least a 7 inch 120Hz OLED display with variable refresh rate. We definitely need that to keep everything nice and smooth. A 6 core x86 CPU. Now, of course, everybody wants to see that 8 cores, 16 threads, but I think we could get by with 6 cores and not even 12 threads if we had a good enough CPU. And now that a lot of these manufacturers are using the big and little architecture, performance and efficiency cores, this could work out really well. Having something like two performance cores, four efficiency cores, or vice versa, you know, they definitely have to do a lot of testing to keep that power draw down, because after all, we are going to be working with a battery powered unit. 16, the 32 gigabytes of system RAM, and of course, we want an RTX based GPU with its own VRAM. Personally, I think if they came out of the door with a handheld that even performs on par with an RTX 3050 6 gigabyte model on a 7 inch display, 1080p, might have to drop some down to 900 with the high settings, this would definitely dominate the market. Of course, if it's not based on Ada Lovelace, we're not going to get that new frame generation, 
So maybe even just a modified RTX 4050, lower power draw, maybe even lower clocks, knowing that it's gonna be a battery powered unit and we gotta keep that battery up. But at the time of making this video, even the lowest end RTX 4064 laptops will draw much more power than we really wanna draw with a handheld like this, at least to get an hour, two hours of battery life out of it. So they will need to come up with some type of custom chip. And I really think it could be done, but it would definitely need to be a custom job specifically designed for these handhelds. And again, even if it performed like the RTX 3050, we would see a lot of people jumping on this, given the price point was okay. I mean, we've seen a lot of really expensive handhelds hit the market. It's not going to match something like the Steam Deck OLED. Not exactly sure how Valve is doing it, but I mean, it's pretty amazing seeing the performance that that's putting out and the kind of battery life you can get out of it also. Remember, that APU is coming in with a total TDP of 15 watts. But of course, NVIDIA hasn't partnered up with anybody to make an x86 handheld like this, so it's pretty impossible to test. But we can try to get really close to those specs and see exactly what happens. So I've got my test rig here. And uh, you might see we've got that i7-14700K, very high-end CPU for a handheld. We're never going to see one of these in here. But what I've done is actually disable all the performance cores except for one. We've got five efficiency cores running here, and I wanna show you, we're only at a 12 watt TDP. So every once in a while, I do see it spike up to around 13.3. Uh, from the BIOS, I've set it as low as we can possibly go here. So 12 watts right there. I mean, we could go lower than this, but performance just really does fall on its face when it's any lower than 12 watts. So a six core Intel CPU, and checking out for a mark, we've got a low profile RTX 3050 six gig model. I've lowered the power as much as possible from Afterburner, but this is the only way that I could get the wattage down and the lowest I can get this thing to go from Afterburner by lowering the power limit is around 24 watts. So right here you can see our GPU power is 23.6, kind of jumps up every once in a while. So in total, we're talking from the GPU and CPU and that's all the power we're calculating right now. We're talking a total TDP between the CPU and GPU of 36 watts. Again, we're not going to come close to what the Steam Deck's doing at 15 watts. Whatever they've done over there is pretty magical. And, you know, I'd love to see a manufacturer come out and hit those kind of numbers with better performance. But right now, the way things are, we're going to need more power to get more performance. That's just how it is with these GPUs and CPUs right now. And another thing to keep in mind is I'm using off the shelf parts. With these custom chips, if this ever came to fruition, they could definitely get the power draw much lower than we're seeing right now. But I still wanted to do some testing with this unit to show you what kind of performance this thing's putting out. CPU at 12 watts, we've got that RTX 3050 six gig model coming in at around 24 watts. And the first game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low settings with DLSS set to quality. We're seeing an average of around 71 FPS. So what I wanna do here is take DLSS from quality to performance. And I'll tell you, even on a bigger screen, I have a hard time noticing DLSS from quality to balanced. Going from no DLSS to performance, it's really hard to notice on a really nice seven inch display. And with this, we gained a nice little bump in performance. Instead of getting an average of around 71, we're seeing averages in the mid 80s. So another thing to take note of is our GPU power consumption, right up 21, 22 watts, still right there at 12 watts on the GPU. We've got an unlocked frame rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this at 60. And now with it locked at 60, our GPU doesn't need to work as hard, rendering those extra frames that are basically unneeded in some cases. Now it's really great to run over 60, I completely understand that, but in a handheld form factor, if we can get 1080p 60 gameplay out of AAA games like this, I'd be totally content with it. Definitely an easier one to run, Forza Horizon 5, but right now we're not using any kind of DLSS. High settings, 60 FPS, 1080p. Putting down this kind of performance in a handheld would be really nice, but again, this is all speculation. We're working with off-the-shelf parts to kind of get this up and running. Horizon Forbidden West, 900p low settings, and uh, this was kind of one of the harder ones to run. It's definitely a newer game on the market, but we're up in the mid 80s. Again, locking all these down will allow us to draw less from a GPU. Here's Mortal Kombat 1, high settings, 1080p, with DLSS set to balanced. On all of the AMD handhelds that I've tested so far with the 780M, we do have to take this down to 900p, medium settings, or even 1080 low with a lot of FSR. 
And one that's always struggled on the AMD iGPUs right now is PAL World. There's no built-in FSR without doing a modification, but there is DLSS, and it does work wonders with this game on these lower-powered GPUs. And finally, going way back, one of my favorite games, OG Skyrim. This is not the remastered version. 1080p Ultra Settings, and I really wanted to throw this in just to see how it was hitting up that GPU. You can see we get kind of a maximum of around 11 watts out of this RTX 3050, which is pretty great. And yeah, for handheld situations, this would be awesome, not drawing so much power, killing that battery really fast. And again, this is all speculation. We're using off-the-shelf parts, lowering that wattage down, trying to get really low power consumption. And even then, with these parts, we're right there at around 36 watts, total TDP, across the CPU and GPU. Not quite what we want to see in a handheld, but with a custom chip from NVIDIA, I think we could see that kind of performance at a lower wattage. Now, I'm not talking 15 watts like the Steam Deck. It will be higher, and we see a lot of these handhelds on the market, especially from AMD and the manufacturer state, that kind of performance mode is 28 watts. If we could get there in that sweet spot with an NVIDIA RTX GPU in one of these, allowing us to use DLSS, I think it would be a game changer for the handheld market. But we're going to have to wait and see, and I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. What kind of features would you like to see in an RTX-powered handheld gaming PC? That's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know. And like always, thanks for watching.